balancing my work and uh, family life, it feels sometimes very stressful with two kids. And um, I'm worried about uh, the effects uh, that it will have when I get older. Our research shows that it's not just the stress that has a difference, that makes a difference on your health in later life. And actually, it's not just balancing family with work that makes a difference. There's a whole host of other factors which are actually more important, like health risk behavior, whether you drink, whether you smoke, whether you exercise. And those things, along with stress, are actually far more important and have or could have a potentially different impact on your health when you are 60 than juggling family and work. In order to answer that question, we need to follow women from the point that they have children, even before that, all the way until they reach their 60s and 70s. That kind of data is very hard to find. But what we have tried to do is associate some uh, outcomes in later life with how women told us that they worked during their working life. And that research has found that women who work full time only tend to report worse health than women who work full time and they balance that with family life. So actually it's women who multitask to a greater extent who report uh, later life, uh, better health in later life. But we don't know whether it's because, we don't know the causality of that. We don't know whether it's because that combination of family and work produced uh, better health in later life or whether women who are better at multitasking are actually better at not smoking, exercising, eating better, uh, and the kinds of things that give you better health. Social capital can certainly help you to some extent. It can also relate to social resources, so the extent to which you have family that helps you with combining work and caring. Uh, but that social resource and social capital alone cannot help you produce better earnings or contribute to pensions. It certainly can fr help women free their time in order to work in the labor market, but social capital cannot necessarily help you in, in terms of producing better health in later life. That's a million dollar question. Uh, policy can do anything by providing incentives. So in the same way you can provide incentives for fathers to spend two weeks for their paternity leave as opposed to two days, which is, in, which is actually the case in some southern European countries. You can provide incentives for men to also combine work and family life to a greater extent. And if we believe the results that show this association of combining full-time work with family and better health in later life, then actually everybody wins because work doesn't have to suffer. But in order to do that, you need to have a welfare state that supports you or a very strong family network that supports you in mm. combining the two. I'm currently in my 30s. By the time I'm in my 60s, one in three women around me in the British context where I live will be aged over 60. And actually one in three persons will be a woman aged 60. So I find that quite striking because it means that everything from services to products to health advice and, and public health has to be adjusted to that fact. One in three persons around me will be the same as me, a woman in her 60s. But within that 30%, the diversity will be immense. You know, there will be women who will have worked full time, who have combined work with family, who have not worked at all, who have not had children. So although it's one in three, that one in three represents so much diversity and such a challenge for the welfare state that I think it's quite impressive.